Hello, and welcome to the web seminar on the EMI and ESD protection for the CAN bus. My name is Pat Richards. I'm an applications engineer in the Analog and Interface Products Division. So let's get started. Today we will be discussing protection methods for the controller area network, or the CAN bus. We will answer the question, why does the CAN bus need extra protection? We will then identify some common protection methods, which include cabling, filters, common mode chokes, split termination, MOVs, TVSs, and then we will uh, finish with a brief summary. So, why does the CAN bus need extra protection anyway? Doesn't the transceiver provide adequate protection? CAN was originally developed for data communications in the automotive industry. The industry is a noisy, harsh environment. CAN nodes are subject to high energy transients, such as load dump, inductive load switching, relay noise, ignition switching, etc. The most popular physical layer in CAN is specified by ISO 11898. The ISO 11898 compatible transceivers do a good job of filtering out noise, which are coupled on the bus, and protecting the node from energy spikes and short circuit conditions. For example, the MCP2515 can withstand shorts of plus or minus 42 volts on the CAN bus and can withstand transient energy spikes of plus or minus 250 volts without damage to the node. Additionally, the differential signaling inherent in CAN helps filter out noise. However, in some systems the environment is harsh enough that extra protection and or extra filtering is needed to protect the node and ensure clean communications. The rest of the presentation will look at some of the common protection methods for the CAN bus. As mentioned earlier, ISO 11898 is by far the most popular physical layer for CAN. The spec requires that the transceiver be able to withstand short circuit conditions on the bus of minus 3 volts to plus 32 volts and transient energy surges of minus 150 volts to 100 volts. Compatible transceivers must meet these minimums. Microchips MCP2551 exceeds the spec. On that device, the short circuit protection is plus or minus 42 volts and transient protection of plus or minus 250 volts. However, sometimes extra protection is still needed to further improve robustness of the CAN system. Twisted pair wiring is a common method to reduce the effect effects of radiated emissions from external sources. Shielded twisted pair reduces the chance of noise coupling on the bus lines. And noise that does couple on the line is equally distributed to both wires and is effectively invisible to the differential signaling. The twisted pair solution is basically a filter and does not provide any protection from high energy electrical disturbances. The filters discussed here are used to reduce noise at the transceiver's bus pins. RC and LC are low-pass filters. Common mode chokes attenuate the noise. It is very important for the components to match. Any mismatch will cause unbalanced filtering or attenuation between CAN-H and CAN-L pins, which will result in distortion of the signal. Additionally, these filter circuits do not provide any voltage clamping. They only filter. Also, the filter components are susceptible to high energy transients and can be damaged. We'll discuss how to protect these circuits later. Common mode chokes increase the common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR, by providing high impedance for the common mode signal, that is, when the bus is in a recessive state with no differential voltage between the CAN-H and CAN-L pins, and providing low impedance for differential signals that is, when the bus is dominant. Chokes are common on CAN buses and can implement filtering on the common mode signal without adding a lot of distortion. That's because the coils are usually matched fairly well. Like RC and LC filters, any mismatch in the inductance of the coils can cause distortion on the differential signals. Another thing to be aware of is that the inductance of the coils and the capacitance of the PCB could theoretically create a tank circuit and cause oscillations, although that is rare. Termination 
of an ISO 11898-2 bus consists of two 120 ohm resistors, one placed at each end of the bus to eliminate reflections. Splitting the single 120 ohm resistor into two 60 ohm resistors and installing a capacitor to ground between the two will create filtering at each end of the bus. Like the other filters discussed, this scheme does not provide any voltage clamping, only filtering. So far, none of the circuits discussed provides protection from high energy transients or short circuits. They only provide noise filtering. It's still left up to the transceiver to provide this protection. Next, we will discuss a couple of solutions which will provide protection from high energy transients and short circuits. Metal oxide varistors, or MOVs, are nonlinear voltage variable resistors and provide clamping to protect against high energy transients and short circuits. MOVs are very popular in protecting electronic circuits from transients in power lines, but can also be used in communication lines such as CAN bus. They are very common in household surge protectors. MOVs have a nonlinear current voltage characteristic. They are connected from the power or the data line, in this case of the CAN bus, to ground. And they have a very high resistance at low voltage and a very low resistance at high voltage, which is how the protection is implemented. MOVs have a very fast turn on time, in many cases less than one nanosecond, meaning that they clamp very quickly. They have improved over the years and do not degrade when activated the way the older MOVs used to. Some issues with MOVs on a differential CAN bus is that they can have high leakage current relative to TVS devices, which will be discussed next. And the trade-off for good performance can be a high shunt capacitance. And the capacitance can be difficult to match between the two needed for CAN bus, one for each bus line. This can create distortions on the bus. Transient voltage suppressors, or TVS devices, operate as avalanche diodes which turn on at high voltage to shunt voltages to safe levels for the transceiver. Like MOVs, TVS devices have very fast turn on times, typically less than one nanosecond. However, unlike MOVs, TVSs can have very low leakage current, as low as 100 nanoamps. Also, Capacitance is very low, making TVS devices virtually transparent to the CAN system during normal operation. TVSs are offered in pairs, i.e. matched capacitance, and have very small footprints, making them ideal for CAN bus. Additionally, TVS devices can be combined with other diodes to create different protection schemes. However, these protection schemes are beyond the scope of this presentation and are not covered. The best solution for filtering noise and protecting CAN nodes may be to combine the circuits. This slide shows one possible example. The TVS is placed so that it not only protects the transceiver, but also protects the filter components from high energy transients. A couple of things to keep in mind when using protection circuits for CAN. One thing, place the components as close as possible to the connector. And another one is to place the connector as close to the edge of the PCB as possible. This will lessen the chance of noise spreading on the PCB before it can be filtered or clamped. So in summary, several options are available when adding extra protection circuits on the CAN bus. In many cases, multiple protection schemes are used for maximum effectiveness with minimal trade-offs. This concludes the presentation. Thank you.